So we finished up the uh, frame rail support. Yeah, buddy. First bends, kind of successful, not really, but it's under the car and it's gonna be covered by other stuff. So nobody's gonna see it anyway, it's fine. And it's not really structural considering all the other stuff, it's fine. Um, so now while we've got the welder out, we've got all the stuff, we're gonna weld up the diff real quick. So mentioned before, I'm gonna use this, uh, this flat bar. I'm gonna cut out a piece that fits in there and then we're just gonna, we're gonna torch it so it gets nice and hot and we're just gonna, oh, we're gonna, we're gonna lay down some beads. We're gonna lay, not really lay, we're gonna like pour down pour some beads. Some uh, but so before I cut, do any measurements, before I cut this, I'm gonna tack together a couple of these so that I can get measurements and I can do all that kind of stuff consistently without like mm. the gears shifting a little bit, anything like that. So let's just run this real quick. This is for carriers. <laughs> Still some live acetone in there. Yeah. Caught fire a little bit. That's not going anywhere. All right. Well, that's that's the welded dip. It's pretty much done. Um, just need a bunch of gear oil so I can put it together, put oil in it. Oh, I need RTV and I need gear oil. But basically put it together, run gear oil through it, drive it around the block a couple times, bring it back. This is gonna be so sick. This is the last thing we need to do donuts. Yeah. John, safety first over here. Yeah. I don't know about this. I know all about it. I mean, GoPro placement is key, y'all. Yeah. Kingsley agrees this is a bad idea. Cool. So first, let's do, so starting from the center, we'll work our way out. Um, go ahead and sit down. Gingerly touch our tips. <laughs> um, we said that we were doing this way. Right. Right? Yep. So that means, that means if we're going out this way, that means the bender is on this side. And on this side. Still in place. Didn't just waste another forty dollars in pipe. Same. Actually, stand on that. Yeah. Well. Okay. Here. measurement way of doing this with the level didn't work. Uh, and that's why you see these two bars kind of going out in different directions. So now we just have to straighten this up. L luckily, it was just the first two bends that were out from each other. The second two bends we eyeballed, so they're actually a little bit more accurate because of that. So all we really have to do is just kind of get that twist out of the middle, middle piece. So we're gonna do the van method again, park the tire on the center, 
Jay is going to twist one way, I'm going to twist the other. Hopefully we don't die. No promises. So that means that's what that we could do. Drive the van up on one side, flip the jack, drive the car up on the jack, press it down. Boom. I'm I a mean, genius. I'm a fucking genius. It's a terrible idea. I wouldn't go as far as to say genius. Don't listen to me. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. You sit on too. Trying to think of something I can stand on so I can do like, uh, yeah, like yeah. full deadlift. Try both types. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, just played you. I guess I could get one. I could get one, but it's so relaxing up here. Tire. <laughs> Make sure the camera's running. <laughs> right, right. That was probably good for <laughs> Come on, motherfucker. <clears throat> Switch? I mean, I'm. Yeah, we can try. Super, super close. Is that a dip in your lap or are you happy to see me? Oh, fucking show off. Once you push, oh, you almost lost it hard. Dude, you are totally lifting with your back. What are you doing? I'm not dead. Move the tires and do it the right. Oh, actually, check it. Did I get you? No. I would have been fucked if it did, though. It's pretty good. That'd have cut me open clean. Yeah, it would have. I mean, it would have been clean. It would have been dead. Oh, he did. I've been cut open real dirty. Full precarious. Yep, we good. Uh, so I leveled the car. So now we have a, you know, a, a good um, surface to measure off of. Uh, also double check that the ground is level. The ground is level. The car is level to the same ground level. Uh, say level again, level. And then um, I took my square my big square use that as a vertical and then measured less than 10 degrees so i think we're sitting at like nine degrees so it's instead of a a 90 degree vertical here we have an 81 degree 82 degrees something like that so this is going to give us a little bit more room behind the seats and just kind of a little bit more aggressive look so we have that there now and this is how we just kind of figured out where the height needs to be okay so i'm going to get in uh, SECA rules, which I just decided are the rules that we're following for this car. Uh, but realistically, SECA rules, NAS NASA rules, um, and it, NAHRA and FIA are all pretty similar. So basically, if we just do one, we're essentially doing all of them. Uh, but so they say that you have to have two inches of head clearance from the top of the top bar to the top of your helmet. Um, a minimum of two inches high clearance. You can have more, but we want this thing to be as low and sexy as possible. So basically what we did to figure out, so we have our, our main hoop height, and then we're gonna have our uh, front hoop come down like this. And the way we're gonna do that is give or take this angle. So it kind of moved a little bit, I'll hold this. And so all we wanted to do was just make sure that this angle 
that we have two inches of head clearance from which here is the top of the main hoop to the top of my helmet. And so we still have our, uh, our little bit of angle, um, maybe not quite as aggressive as we wanted, but what are you gonna do? You know, I'm real tall. Yep. So now measurements are done. Everything is in place. I'm gonna hop out and we just gotta mark the main hoop where it's touching the car. And then that's our angle for, uh, for cutting. Uh, I mean, that's it for bending the hoop, actually constructing it. We're a little bit out right here, but I think that once I get um, the drop bars in and the crossbars in, which I'm just now realizing that the crossbars are gonna be a nightmare on this car, but I'll figure that out later. Um, once I get the drop bars and the crossbars in, the, well, let me rephrase. Once most of the cage is done, uh, essentially drop bars, crossbars, front hoop, windshield bar, and then into the support for the front, for the whatever, um, I can use a, a ratchet strap and just tie a ratchet strap to something and pull that line back in. Once everything else is kind of in place, yeah, yeah, crank it down. I don't think it's really going to matter, but just to be safe, so we don't get any any garbage that we have to deal with. Uh, we're going to put in the drop bars. So the drop bars basically make the main hoop actually work. Uh, so we're going to go from here to the this base plate right here. Um, so typically the way SCCA and NASA and all of them say is your, uh, your pads, where it's basically where the cage mounts to the chassis. The pad has to be, I'm thinking of NASA's rules right now, the pad has to be a minimum of nine square inches, a maximum of 100, uh, can be no less than 12 inches, sorry, no less than two inches on one side and no more than 12 inches on one side. So basically they're just, they're saying like, it has to be a square three by three to 10 by 10, something like that. Uh, but it doesn't have to be a square anyway. Technically, I think we're going against the rules by welding straight to the box here. Um, but fuck it, I don't really care anymore. Uh, so I'm gonna weld it here. If this doesn't pass tech, I think what we'll be able to get away with is just basically taking the reciprocating saw cutting along the um, cutting along this box and then putting a plate in welding the plate down and then welding the bar back down to the plate so theoretically it should be a very minimal repair if we have to do it we figured out the angle that it's going to mount so we want it as close to the corner as possible um, just for the most rigidity possible and so we figured out the angle with the angle finder is 87 degrees this is 86 degrees. That's fine. Um, there's a website called Block Layer, and basically you go on and you put in your diameters, your tube thicknesses, all that kind of stuff. Blocks. Huh? Uh, you put in your diameters, the tube thickness, all that kind of stuff. It gives you a cut template. So we're gonna put the cut template. Oh, there is a seam on this. We could use. Um, put the cut template on. We're gonna cut it for this angle right here, and then. Once we get this kind of fitted, then we'll we'll cut this part a little bit long and then we'll walk it in, walk it in, and just kind of like move it, move it, move it until we get it exactly where we want and then we'll tack it in place. Recapping, I have stripped all the paints off the wheels. Uh, I was going to paint them glitter sparkle per uh, teal, glitter sparkle teal, uh, just like the uh, the spindles, the uprights, the hubs, whatever you want to call them, on the rear. Uh, all of that is reassembled, BT dubs. So um, the secondary brake caliper is mounted. The, the lines are all run. I had a leak in the very first fitting on the master cylinder on the e-brake handle. Um, and I think it was just because I'm really bad at bending copper pipe. Um, so that's almost done. But uh, I stripped the paint on the wheels. I was going to paint them glitter sparkle teal and I decided that we should try it out silver because the stripping process 
was a goddamn nightmare. What are we doing today, Jay? So today, as folks already know, got the drop bars in the main hoop. We need to get the crossbar mounted for the harnesses, and then we need to get the diagonal crossbar mounted to add additional rigidity to the cage. And oh, and I ordered harnesses too. Those will be here Monday. Regulations. We did get harnesses. That's right. Oh, no, sorry. They'll be here Saturday. I won't be back until Monday. Wow. And we're gonna continue. We're gonna know, do, the, do the. Let's do the. Let's do the forward bars first. Okay, so we'll do the forward bars first, and then we'll come back to harness bar and the diagonal. So, stay tuned. Let's get it. We're going to start the bends from the front and go to the back. Uh, basically, uh, I want to do that because this section for me is kind of important because the this isn't strictly part of the roll cage, but it'll be part of like uh, body rigidity. Um, there's going to be a bar that comes up here, kind of comes up to the fender line and goes up here. And luckily, whenever I get around to making a hood, this is just a sample, don't look at that. Um, but like, if this, if I can get a bar that kind of lays flat right across here, it's actually below the highest point of the um, windshield line, whatever. So essentially what I'm saying is I don't have to have like some big mm. like wings on the side of the hood, whatever we make, It'll, it can just go flat across here and then come out and then however we're gonna do it. So, um, so basically in order for this to kind of sit here and then be able to flush up to the, the main bar or the, the forward tube rather, um, let me move this, move this over a little bit so I can get a little bit of space. Oh, that's, that's precocious. Push is the wrong Procarious. Procarious. Okay. Uh, so what we want is we want a little bit of flat, Right here, let me go grab another. Meant to do that. So that bar could potentially sit there, maybe a little bit higher. So if we want like partial flatness for that, then I would say the bend has to be. Yeah, the bend probably has to be right at this top level. So let's say. That is, I mean, should we even go a little higher? Do I want it a little higher? Can we still get a flat surface to go lower? Flat-ish. Maybe a little bit lower still. Yeah, let's say that. Come somewhere in the middle, so 13 inches. So from the end of the bar to our first bend, we'll do 13 inches, and then we'll measure the rest of the bends as we go along. Okay, uh, so the cage, the forward hoops are tacked in. I've got two here, two there, just kind of holding it in place. Um, not gonna make the same mistake again and weld the whole thing before I know it's all finalized. Uh, Cause that's just a lot of extra work for me. So, uh, but yeah, the, the, I mean, it's in. It's like that second half went way faster than I was expecting it to. Um, so now the only thing I have left to do is make the little uh, brace guys to go here, um, just to connect this piece to this piece. And then once I get that in, and these are you know tacked in place, then I can go through and weld, do the complete seam weld all the way around. And the, I mean, the majority of the cage is finished then. Uh, the rest of the bars, there'll be a windshield bar that goes across here, but you know, that one's optional, doesn't need to be there. Uh, I think in this car it does need to be there. I think in SCCA, like, SCCA and uh, NASA, like, their, their cage specs are mostly for putting a cage into a car that already exists. Uh, I don't think they would let us get away without having 
the, the one across here. So, so we need the windshield bar. Uh, I think I'm gonna do an actual dash bar and not use, not reuse the stock dash bar. Um, this one just has a lot of tabs on it and it's got a bend in it that I don't need. It's just got a lot of extra nonsense going on that doesn't need to be here. So there'll be a, a dash bar that goes across. There's the windshield bar. There's the cross support behind the seats and then the harness bar behind the seats. Um, and then that's all of the cage. Then the rest of the bars and stuff I wanna put in, it's all ancillary, it's all optional, just to kind of protect the, the stuff. Oh man, I am so stoked. All right, I'm gonna put the battery in, put the GoPro on my head, and I'm gonna go do a quick lap. fitted all of the these pipes that I needed, these tubes that I needed. So I did this one on both sides, um, basically just kind of, for one it looks nice, but also it's uh, giving us some more strength here. Did this main cross tube, did the windshield bar and the dash bar, and then obviously this one on the other side. So I got all that, uh, what do you call, it? notched, that's the word I was looking for. I got it all notched, um, which is actually, I'm, I don't really, I haven't, I, I can tell. Um, but yeah, anyway, so got it all notched last night, kind of just in place. We went across, I didn't record any of it because, you know, it's just notching, like we have a bunch of that footage already. Right, right. Um, we went straight across with the windshield bar because this, so, As much as possible, I'm kind of trying to take Hoonigan's lead, to take Dan's lead, because obviously he knows what he's doing more than I do. Uh, but there are certain provisions that we still have to follow as far as like guidelines, right? So this cart is way taller than shark cart because shark cart, if you look, like if you watch the videos, you know, you've got Hertz, not a small dude. I think he's like 6'1", 6 6'2". Six Vinny's pretty tall, Scotto is fucking massive. And all of them, their heads are like at this height or maybe even a little bit above with the helmet on. So that's not acceptable according to the rules. According to the rules, we need to have two inches of head clearance. So this had to be taller. So that automatically changed a whole bunch of our measurements. And one of them being this height, because this is all taller, that's completely out of our field of view. There's no, you know, even without a helmet on, you just don't see it. So I didn't need to put a bend in it. I didn't need to do any crazy um, changes in, in angle or anything like that. It just, I figured the easiest way would just be welded in straight. We welded in straight, it's welded to the chassis up there. We're gonna do, oh, we need to do the forward bars. Well, sorry, these are the forward bars. We need to do the ones that go from the forward bar to the <laughs> frame rail. Mm -hmm. um, so I got more welding gas today, got this all welded in, went all the way around, and now we have almost a full cage. The only things we absolutely have to have that are missing are door bars and harness bars. Mm -hmm. But I got harnesses now, so we can actually test them out and see, sure. see what our angles are. I just brought out the shoulder straps to kind of uh, visualize it a little bit better. Um, I didn't hook them up to anything, they're just sitting. So this straight edge is just clamped to the thing and I kind of eyeballed it, give it or take where I thought it should go. Um, and then we adjusted it a little bit here and there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop in and throw the shoulder belt on. You'll kind of see how it falls across here. I'm a little bit taller than Jay, so I'll, my shoulders need to be a little bit higher to essentially use the same bar. Um, but Jay's shoulders are like almost dead even right now, maybe just a hair over. So let me hop in. Grab 
this, grab that, and that sits, and I'm in the car, and my, you know, position is where it needs to be. The, sh the straps are coming off directly parallel to my direction of motion, so parallel to the ground, or a little bit down. And so these ones right now are just a hair down. So I think this is what we're gonna do for um, the height of the bar. Now, that does raise a difficulty in the back for the passenger side. Uh, Jay's moved the camera all the way over, let's move it on back. So, basically now the passenger strap, the left strap has to go and has to wrap around this junction where these two meet. And frankly, I don't know if that'll pass tech. Um, but at the end of the day, like, if it doesn't pass tech, then that just means we don't get passengers. Um, the driver side is well within classification or specification rather. Uh, so I think we'll just continue this way and hope for the best as far as that. Because at this point, fuck it, I'm not, I'm not cutting this crossbar out and doing it again. Not a chance. So we'll roll with it and uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, so our height is exactly where we need it there. And then this is the angle that we need here, right? So now what we do is I want to draw the line of the intersecting pipe mm -hmm. exactly where it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line that up and that's pretty good there. I'm going to draw this line. Let's go here. And again, this is just eyeballing it. But that's the line. And then you also want a line perpendicular to that cut or to this, because that's going to give you your height for how far you go in with that um, half an inch. Okay, so that is good to go. I don't need to take anything off of this side at all. Like this side is super good because this is going to feed up as I trim this edge. So now all I have to do is just keep trimming a little bit, trimming a little bit, trimming a little bit, kind of keep bringing that part down and this will automatically kind of work its way up. So yeah, this part is about patience. <laughs> uh, it's way easier to do, it's way easier to do like 10 rounds of, God, fuck mosquitoes. Uh, it's way easier to do like 10 rounds of trimming and refitting than it is to recut the pipe and start from scratch. So cut, take a little bit off, um, test it, take a little bit off, test it, take a little bit off. It just, it takes forever and it's super boring to watch, but it's kind of the only way you can do it. Okay, I think we have enough material to do at least this upper door bar. Word. How we fitting? How we fitting? We're in business. Boom. Look at that clearance. Oh, look at the clearance. Bruh. Shred it up. Race car status. Same. It's real good. It's perfect. Uh, beer of the day today is Blood Orange IPA by 21st Amendment. Uh, it's a little bitter for me. I'm not an IPA person. Don't listen to him. It's good stuff. You guys should try it. Don't you talk shit. I mean, do you like Hawaiian rolls? No, I don't like Hawaiian rolls. You know I don't like Hawaiian Why you gotta... Cut, why you gotta... cut to poll in the comments of Hawaiian rolls. Do you like them? Do you not? Let us know. I feel like you're gonna be out I don't care. On this. I don't decide my life and my, my likes and dislikes based on the internet and what the internet thinks of, of things. I think you should adjust your priorities, but. I mean. I mean, if the internet isn't life, what is? It's true. <laughs> good, good point.